Welcome back to the Seaport in Boston. City's a buzz. Bruins tonight, Celtics tomorrow night. We're all excited, but we're talking open source, which is a very exciting topic. Every company is using open source. I mean, it is the mainspring of innovation. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host Paul Gillen. And you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2022. Raj Wickramasinghe is here. He's hybrid and emerging platforms lead at Accenture. And Guido Greber, who's Red Hat's business group lead at Accenture. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. So Raj, we saw you in the keynote up there today with, with Stephanie. She's coming on tomorrow. Rock star Stephanie Chiris, also a Boston sports fan. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we'll have to work that in. But uh, you could talk about the history with Red Hat. How long have you guys been at this? And where's, give us a journey update. Well, first of all, thanks for having us here. Um, yes, we are big fans of Red Hat and especially Stephanie. I get to work, I had the pleasure of working with her very closely. Um, our relationship with Red Hat goes many, many years, decades, I think. And um, but Paul Comier will tell tell you that you know we've been focused a lot with the formation of our new business unit in cloud first um, around migrating to the public cloud. But now, as we focus more and more around how our clients begin to operate in the public cloud, in the in the cloud ecosystem, hybrid is coming much more into focus, and Red Hat is very much, back, you know, a key client of our, a key partner of ours. So, we go way back, but this is all about us doubling down and increasing our partnership and deepening it with them. So uh, Paul Cormier talked today about hybrid cloud is everything. Yeah. And it seems like a couple of years ago there was, the focus was more on moving to the public cloud, on getting yeah. off of uh, private infrastructure. Has there been a change in, way, in the ways in which customers are thinking? Are they going to be hanging on to their private infrastructure longer perhaps than, than was expected uh, a couple of years ago? I think the, um, first of all, it's very different industry by industry. If you look at uh, retail or consumer goods, I think there's a, big movement in terms of percentages of workloads that are getting moved on to public cloud. If you look at industries like banking or utilities or government, more financial services, more regulated industries, I think we are finding a much larger percentage of their workloads because of regulatory reasons and security reasons, et cetera, are need to remain either on premise or in private cloud. So I think it, it very much depends on the industry, but regardless, the hype, you know, especially with the movement to edge now, um, hybrid is going to be, per, you know, permeating everything. So I think by industry it depends, uh, but but the edge is driving a whole new flywheel. You know, we started the cube in 2010, so the cloud was, you know, modern cloud anyway was, uh, like I say, four years in into it. And at the time, you know, to your point, Raj, financial services. It was an evil word. No way we're ever going to the cloud. No, that's, that's changed, obviously. But then, when the financial crisis hit, you had, so initially it was a lot of tire kicking, experimentation. When the financial crisis hit, you had a lot of CFOs saying, okay, let's shift CapEx to OpEx, and so that was sort of a bridge. And then after we came out, it was like this spate of innovation. And then we saw that during the pandemic, where cloud migration was a high priority, and or it was you know, the lifeline. And now, it sounds like customers are kind of rethinking, to your earlier conversation, what is cloud? Right? It's that operating model. So I wonder if you could sort of, can you confirm that's kind of the journey that customers are taking? Where are they today? What does it mean that they're, you know, the, the operating model? What do they consider cloud? Um, you actually, you, you see it, it's like, that it's really a drive forward to the, to the cloud. Uh, but where it was in the beginning, if it doesn't hype about public cloud, they become more and more aware that hey, it's it's hybrid, because they have to bring the legacy system and uh, process into the cloud as well, and it takes more time than they actually they have thought before. So it's like there was a process of learning, and also like in the steps moving forward to this operating model, because they also understand I cannot operate a cloud like I was operating in a classical way, like at my old uh, data center and everything. It, it needs all the capabilities, it needs all the skills, and, and it, especially then if you go in a hybrid world, it needs a, a hybrid operation between the classic, traditional, but also the new way, so for how you operate into the cloud. And you really see also in the financial services now, uh, we had, the, uh, I mean, Raj presented it, it at the keynote, we had a client in Germany, he made a decision, a very traditional um, financial services client, 
uh, providing IT service to um, German saving banks, and they did this decision. And I would say if you have spoken to them 10 years ago, they would not go into the cloud, but now they went to the cloud via a private cloud, and now they got the confidence about how to operate in it, and now they move forward into a public cloud, but from a private cloud into the public cloud. So they have the security, they have upskilling on, on skills and people, and they understand the process and what's really required and needed in order to have such an environment. Generally, what's the strategy with regard to modernization? Are organizations more building uh, like an abstraction layer uh, uh, with you know, microservices and then connecting to, to the cloud, or are they actually rewriting applications that to, to make them cloud native. What, what, do you, what are you advising clients from a strategy standpoint? And yeah. I know it depends, but is there any No, no, it's, a, it's a great question. I think the, f the, the, the genesis to that strategy is how they view infrastructure, right? So, you know, everyone is, has this kind of, I don't know, there's this almost mythical um, opinion out there with cloud, you don't need to worry about your infrastructure. All the providers will worry about it, and you just need to move it there. But the opposite is true. It's really critical what your infrastructure strategy is as you move to the cloud, because depending on what workload you have, you know it can be on any one of the continuums that you described. So the first thing is, where do you want to house your workload is the question, and that will drive how, what do you want to do with your application, whether you want to just maintain it the way it is, do you want to simply modernize it, keeping where it is, or do you want to completely reskin it or even eliminate it? So, so I think the entire, the, basically the answer to your question around do we, what do we do with the application is fundamentally driven by what is your infrastructure strategy and what that workload needs to do for you. So I know you want to jump in, but I have to follow up. Is, is, are you saying hardware matters? Because we heard Paul Cormier today <laughs> talk about this hardware renaissance. I'm actually, I just ran a power panel yeah. called Does Hardware Still Matter? <laughs> it's, you're saying it matters. Yeah, and, and it doesn't, and infrastructure doesn't always, I mean, now that you can do infrastructure as code, right? I mean, I was at the, uh, the Dell Summit last time and, and Red Hat is a huge partner of Dell now, right? Which, you know, was much more uh, um, partnered with VMware. But I think I think the whole ecosystem is opening up, and even the um, hardware providers are looking at this in a in a much more nimble way. But yes, it's very much part of the conversation. They haven't gone away. <laughs> now, during, during your keynote, you outlined uh, sort of your strategy going forward is called cloud first. Yes. What does cloud first mean? Well, um, we, we want to make sure that when we talk about transformation of business with our clients, so Accenture always goes with the idea of an industry lens of solving a specific problem for a client. What is the business problem we solve? And increasingly, what we want to message and drive to our clients is, if you're thinking about, regardless of what the business is, Technology is absolutely critical to whatever transformation you're doing, and when you look at technology, you have to think cloud first, because that's where all the innovation is happening, that's where all the um, um, investments are being driven, whether it's, an in, whether it's a software vendor, whether it's a hardware vendor, whether it's a, right? So, so we, you have to think cloud first when you think about transforming your business. Uh, do, what is, uh, how does modernization play into that? You know, a lot of vendors are, are throwing a lot of resources at the modernization market, VMware, Tanzu, and IBM and such. Uh, how interested are customers really in modernizing legacy applications? Hugely, right? Because uh, fun fundamentally, I think everything is now driven by our experiences, what we now uh, are used to in terms of interfacing with applications or interfacing with function sets or interfacing with technology. So there is a lot of inherent um, legacy technology that doesn't have that experience. So when you think about transforming, you have to come at it from an experience point of view, and when you think in those terms, modernization or even rebuilding the same, even if it's the same function set, uh, 
reskinning it and, and modernization is critical so for the purposes of engagement. Guido, what's the number one challenge that customers that you're working with face in terms of modernization? Is it trying to figure out, like Raj was sort of laying out the portfolio, what do I do with it? Do I modernize it? Do I retire it? Do, do I let it just die on the vine? What's their number one challenge? Uh, Mainly, it depends also on the industry, but it's, uh, I would say for the highly regulated, it's certainly regulations. They always have their own interpretation of the regulation, what regulation means for them, but normally it's, it's not really what, what they understand. Um, but I think this is more and more coming to an ease and more people understand what it really means. But it's also, um, what we see a lot, they think first about technology, but not what kind of the business problem they want to um, um, they want to solve. So it's like, instead of having a, a technology neutral discussion, it's really they want to achieve, um, to have really start and decide. And then having this discussion away, um, which obviously it's, it's one of the key ones because they start to the cloud even without having a strategy, without having a vision. If you have a clear vision, if you have a clear strategy, you know where you want to go and then you can make your business case, you can make your architecture and then you decide on technology. And then, of course, on this journey, all the things about security, compliance come into the play. And I think, in, in, I think that's the easiest approach, but clients struggle to understand, of course. I mean, the technology is changing rapidly. Even the new products, new release cycle, new life cycles, the complexity of all the tools, hardware, you, you may, we mentioned before, network is changing, new wording coming up. It's really hard to keep pace, or keep up with the pace of the technology and what's happening, even for us. And then you understand the complexity and bring this complexity back to a simplicity, but not without losing, we have this also in the keynote, the efficiency and uh, the flexibility for an engineer, because he, that's what he needs. Do your clients have the skill sets to, to do all that? I mean, it's such a self-serving question to you guys, <laughs> but, but no, do they? I mean, there's a skills shortage, there's a, a, a battle for talent, so how are they dealing with I that? I mean, it's obvious the battle for talent is here. I mean, everybody's looking for the best talents, and it's, if, you really, if you need a full stack engineer, for example, it's very hard to get a full stack engineer on your ground, you go really cloud native. So you have to upskill people, to reskill people. So it's, there's also a change in coming into it, and the change is not to forget. And so it's what we say most time the technology is an easy part, but the change, change the organization, change upskill the organization, that's the hard part, because you need to change from one, from one mindset to another. And we know from the, from the past what change, all, it, it, people are not open to change in general, so we need to change the mindset. I want to go back to hybrid cloud, because we had Ashesh Badani from uh, Red Hat was on earlier, yeah. and he said, Edge is really redefining the definition of hybrid cloud. Yeah. It's, it's a more complex architecture, yeah. and it's changing the, the nature of how we think about hybrid cloud. Are you seeing that with your customers? Are they changing their thinking about what hybrid means in that context? Yeah, um, completely. Uh, you know, I was, I was, um, we, we did a bunch of um, uh, research recently, and I had I just wanted to make sure I quote this. I mean, there's a Flexara report that came out that says 80% of all enterprises now are in, on hybrid, 89% multi-cloud. Uh, Red Hat did a report that said 80% of our businesses are expected to um, uh, increase their use of open source, right? So, so yes, hybrid is everywhere, Edge is driving it, but there's, a, there's another critical element to that movement. The complexity of our clients' estates are increasing because whether it's hybrid or whether it's edge or whatever, they are now, you know, you know given, you, if you're a CIO or a CTO, your estate is really complex now. So one of the things that we now need to do is how do we simplify that? So, you know, we think, and we've been talking with Red Hat about this, we need to come up with a, a clean, you know, we keep calling it, you know, single pane of glass for a enterprise that allows them to look at their estate in a way that allows them to then simply make some innovative decisions across the entire state. So yes, Edge is driving a hybrid, but the key thing that we now need to overcome is how do we manage that complexity? We got a new term. Uh, Ashesh, I call it super cloud, but Ashesh has a better word, it's meta cloud. That's going to stick. <laughs> when I think of Accenture, I think of deep industry expertise. Of course, yeah. we have that, but, but with, with the partnership from Red Hat, it's, a very, it, it's, it's horizontal in the, in the sense that it can go anywhere. So how do you guys work in, in terms of within Accenture, plugging into your deep industry expertise, and how does that, that horizontal Red Hat fit? 
That's a really good question. So, so you know, one of the things, you know, first of all, we came out with a uh, an announcement today about our expanded relationship with Red Hat. One of the key elements in that announcement is how we are looking and bringing in Red Hat into our industry business motions. So we actually have decided to pick a certain number of industries. You know, we financial services is one, telco is another. We are thinking about utilities in Europe. Pub public health is a uh, is another one that we are looking at. And as we come up with our offerings, you heard me and Stephanie talk about joint offerings earlier on the keynote. Mm -hmm. Um, these offerings are industry offerings, but in those offerings we have embedded and we are they're powered by Red Hat technology um, that allows these industry solutions to drive innovation through their technology. Um, I, yes, tech, Red Hat can be, for the most part, a horizontal cross-industry you, you know, technology, but you have to really bring them into specific industry solutions because of the way we go to market, and I think Red Hat brings innovation uh, in a way that uh, these industries haven't seen before. So, I mean, how do you stay out of their way? Because they have a services operation that they're trying to grow, and that's your business as well. So, uh, how, where, where are the, the lines of demarcation? Re uh, back to your question, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a limit in opportunity. Um, Red Hat, you know, Stephanie, me, Paul, we're all talking about how do we collectively increase both our armies, you know, I, I do, Yes, there might be occasional uh, overlaps in the trenches, but when you look at the bigger picture, it is not a problem at all. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I mean, the, the way you're describing it, Raj, is exactly the way it should work, right? You lead with the business, yeah. figure out the business problem, how you're going to solve that. The technology will take care of itself. The technologies come and they go. Yeah. And, and you want to use modern technologies, obviously, but if you don't get the business piece right, forget that, that no technology is going to save you. Exactly right, and, and the complexities of what the businesses today are facing is getting more and more difficult, and I think actually technologies like Red Hat, you know, their, their whole concept of open source, I think is very creative around driving innovations from, from the market. I want to ask you about that, because of Paul Cormier's yeah. key, keynote this morning was sort of an homage to open source. How much do customers really care about open source? Customers care about innovation, and and anything that drives innovation to their business, whether it whether it comes from technology, whether it comes from crowdsourcing, whether it comes from you know a, a marketing, doesn't matter. I think when you look at the key hunger for innovation and how open source drives innovation, it becomes part of the business conversation and. Uh, and I think that's been one of the mantras that Paul has had from day one about how this is such a great platform for innovation. But and it, I think that's is the it something reason. customers ask for? They say, we must develop this using open source platforms and tool sets. Um, it depends. I think, I think there are some technology uh, CIOs or CTOs that are much more religious about what their technology stack needs to be. There are others that are, that are much more business oriented. Um, so yes, there are, you know, if it's, more in telecom field, I think in telecom or some of the more uh, technology-driven fields, they will ask for open source. Mm. In others, they uh, we bring bring it through as part of offering. Yeah. Here's the nuance that I see, and you mentioned Paul Cormier, Accenture, especially. I mean, you look at your ascendancy as a company. You, for years, would take known processes and codify them yep. in software, and and you made you know a lot of great innovations doing that, and people made a lot of money. Today, this new normal, he calls it, I call it the new abnormal, you don't know what's around the corner. You have to build flexibility into yeah. your business, and that, that is something that open source enables. Yes. Uh, and, and so that's sort of this, really not really, we don't want to speak about it too much, but build business resiliency and flexibility, is the, that is the new normal. I, I don't see how you can do it without, without open source expertise. I completely agree, Dave, I, I, and I think, um, it's actually an asset, so you know, in some ways, selfishly, by having open source in our, in our solution stack, some of the innovation gets them much more democratized, right? So, so it, it can come from a much broader suite. So the load is not only on Accenture to come up with all the innovation. We can, we can actually come up with a 
a more democratized way of bringing that innovation in. So I think that's, that's a great... Yeah, and that's it doesn't always go back to the community. I mean, Amazon <laughs> built a $70 billion business on open source, but well, not all. Anyway. <laughs> all right, we got to go. Guys, thanks so much for coming on yeah. theCUBE. Really Thank you very much for having us. Uh, pleasure. All right, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante for Paul Gillen, theCUBE's continuous coverage of Red Hat Summit 2022 from the Seaport in Boston. We'll be right back.